Quick disclaimer before this video starts, I'm not sponsored by DJI, they did not send me this camera at all. Matter of fact, I reached out to DJI to try to get a free camera for the Osmo Action to review for. They basically pigeon tossed me, told me I was irrelevant, so I had to pay for the camera out of my own money. These are my own opinions. Let's begin the review. DJI Osmo Action, amazing action camera, came out last year and I've had the camera itself for about two months, three months now. In today's video, I wanted to do a little bit of a review on it. Obviously, action cameras are a huge part of making these videos. I use them on a daily basis. They power my ice times. I sometimes use them for time lapses. I, I use them for almost every component of the video and I would say they make up about 75% of what you see on this channel on a regular basis. In today's video, I wanna do a little review on it, talk about the pros, talk about the cons, talk about what really makes this camera so great I've talked a lot recently about Insta360, not want to use GoPro anymore, and, and I will say, I'm not using GoPro products anymore unless the Hero 9 comes out soon and has some absolutely blow your doors off features. What I would love is an Osmo Action 2 because the camera's been great, I'll tell you why. This is the GoPro Hero 8 Black. This thing lasts me about four to five months before it crapped out in the ocean, got hit by a wave, waterproof door blew off, camera's done. I've had a lot of issues with GoPros over the years, and as a, a one-time religious GoPro user, I'm not using GoPro anymore. This doesn't even work anymore. I just have it for purposes of complaining. The Osmo Action has so many jam-packed features that are amazing. The number one big thing to talk about is the screens. Like filming videos, I can see on the screen that it's actually recording. And you're, like, you can look at it. Like, I'm looking at it right now. I can see it. I know what's going on. Yeah. I still know what's going on. Yeah, maybe now I don't know what's going on as much. On the back, you have this amazing, huge touch screen. I mean, this thing is awesome. I mean, I got pretty big fingers. I got sausage fingers. I can touch this thing, no problem, do whatever I want with it. The other amazing thing is the front screen. You press a button on the side and then boom, now the screen pops out and it's on the front. The one thing I will say about it though, I wish the front screen was touch screen. You can't actually touch anything on the screen, but if the front screen was touch screen, that would be amazing because the Insta360 ONE R has a touch on the front and the back. Where the Insta360 ONE R falls short is that this screen is huge, great for sausage fingers like mine. The 360 ONE R screen is just like this, but my big fingers, they didn't really get along with it. The next thing I'd say is software. The actual software in the operating system of this camera is second to none. I used to think GoPro was the pinnacle of software for action cameras. It was easy to use, functional. DJI has come up with a software that once you start getting the hang of it, almost immediately you know what's going on, it's super easy to use very functional, the menus are all very close range of each other, so you're not too far off from what you wanna do next. Probably one of the biggest selling points of the camera is how easy it is to use. And on top of being easy to use, I love the fact that it doesn't look like an action camera. The actual footage itself, when you're on a GoPro, it looks warped, it looks distorted. DJI has actually put in a de-warp mode, so when you're filming on the camera, you press de-warp, now it doesn't look like an action camera anymore. It almost looks like an iPhone, borderline cheap DSLR footage, which I think is great because I hate the idea of giving away the shot in the sense of you know that I filmed this on a GoPro, you know that I filmed this on certain cameras. The battery, kind of a clunky little setup here, huge battery. There is no like real battery door on top of, the, of putting the battery in, it's all one piece. But what I will say is the battery life itself is great. When I was using the Hero 8, there was no way this thing was lasting a full lifetime on the ice in a cold rink. I might have been able to get 35, maybe 45 minutes. Probably closer to 30 as the camera died and got closer towards the end of its life before it finally did die in the ocean. But this, I've been able to use a full one battery on entire ice time. All my ice time so far, yeah, I probably finished the ice time with about three to 5% battery, if not almost dead, but it's never died. I've never missed a shot on a one hour ice time due to this camera. It's great so far. Durability wise has been great as well. There's a couple times, obviously as an action camera, it's black on the ice with black pucks. It kind of gets mixed up. Some people think it's a puck, they shoot it. Haven't had any issues with it though. It's been shot a couple times against the boards. It's been fine, it's been hit with pucks. It gets covered in water from being on the ice. No issues, obviously the camera's waterproof. I'm not going skiing or snorkeling or scuba diving anytime soon, but what I can say is the camera's waterproof. Works great so far, the durability, absolutely top notch so far. I've killed three GoPros in the last year or so, shattering lenses from pucks hitting them. This so far, as you can see, no issues so far, which is great. I think the biggest selling point of the entire Osmo Action is the fact that this thing is functional with all the other accessories. So I have the Osmo Action on the Osmo Action case that it comes with. I have this on the, I guess, pole extender things from Insta360. I have this on an Insta360 clip-on mount and the GoPro suction cup mount. So this DJI Osmo Action plays well with all the other accessories. And whether you're using the jaw clamp, you're using the chest mount, anything GoPro, anything Insta360 accessory-wise, it all works with. All you need is the pins and the proper mounts to put it on. You're good to go. This thing is so functional, it's insane. You don't have to spend any additional money on mounts. You're good, you're set. Stabilizer is also fantastic. So they call it rock steady. GoPro has their hyper smooth. Insta360 has their flow state stabilization. I would say the rock steady is probably just as good, maybe even like a hair below the hyper smooth 2.0 on GoPro. This is kind of like a little low light audio test. I'll show you how the stabilizer is. Actually really, really, really good. It looks looking kind of red in the selfie screen. 
Camera does it a lot, it drives me nuts. I think the audio is okay, it doesn't sound great. Keep in mind, it is in a case. This could use a shotgun microphone. The one thing that I don't like about the Osmo action though, is the field of view. With GoPro, you have the ability to choose your field of view. You can go super narrow, punch it in, you can pull it all the way out for super view. Great for a first person or a POV shot, if you will. With the 361R, you don't get to pick. You get to film what you want, and then when you're in the software after you pick. So there is no deciding, I want I want to punch it in, I want to punch it out. You pick after, which is great, because then you get maximum use of your shots. With this, there isn't really a field of view, so there is no wide, narrow, anything. It's just all kind of wide. Some modes are a lot more punched in than others, but there is no real option to select or choose that kind of stuff. So in the Osmo Action 2 or a software update, I would love to have that punched in a little bit more. Have the ability to just basically, I want to pick what I'm filming. I like control of my shots. I think another thing I love about the camera too is the buttons. The buttons are super easy easy to press. With a GoPro, the, the buttons don't always get pressed and they don't always actually register the camera. The power off button is basically irrelevant. Like, like you can't actually feel them. If I was to close my eyes in the Osmo Action, I know what buttons I'm pressing because the shooting button or the quick shoot button, it's circled, it's a little bit bigger. The power on, power off button on the left or the switch modes button, a little smaller, it's square. I know what I'm pressing and I have an actual feedback. So if I press a button, I actually know what I'm pressing. And on top of that, tell me that sound isn't magical. I love that sound. The powering on, power off, and when you start shooting, stop shooting. Great sound effects, DJI. The biggest thing I don't like about the Osmo Action is the footage, although it's not saturated like GoPro. I do not appreciate how saturated GoPro footage is, but the Osmo Action footage, it almost comes out super red, comes out super yellow. It's almost like the software itself can't figure out what color it wants to make things. Although yes, you can shoot in logs, so you don't have to deal with that kind of stuff. I like things to be as easy as humanly possible. I don't want to have to deal with color correcting, all that kind of stuff. So when it comes out red, it comes out yellow, I have to fix that, not a big fan of that. Also the fact that when you shoot in slow-mo, slow motion looks great, it shoots up to 240 frames per second at 1080, but when you're shooting slow motion, it separates the audio from the video file. So my video file will save as a 240 frame per second, eight times slow-mo clip, and the audio will be separate and it'll be at full speed. So if I take the slow motion clip, speed it up eight times, get it to regular speed, and then sync up the audio file after. And it's, it's just kind of a pain in the rear end. I would just appreciate if everything came like a GoPro clip where it comes stock at the regular speed with the audio attached and you can slow it down after. It's not losing files, having a mix match. One thing I don't like about the actual camera. As far as the audio goes, the audio is okay. It's not great. I would say GoPro Hero 8 probably has better audio than the Osmo Action. Insta360 audio is basically garbage. I think all action cameras, though, to be honest, if you don't have great audio, I was actually using GoPro audio for a while for the actual vlogs themselves, where here I'm using a shotgun mic on a DSLR. I don't think I can really get away with using DJI Osmo action audio for a lot of stuff, but I would love to see them use maybe a little mini road style shotgun mic that's included in the package and a cold shoe mount case. I know I'm thinking big here, but it'd be nice if it was included so I can actually have some great audio out of the box. The second I open this thing, I want to be ready to go. I want to have my slow motion footage ready to go. I want a great audio. I want to have this as simple as possible. So I literally get it, unbox it, I'm ready to rock. But all in all, I would say the camera's great. I mean, I think you can probably tell here from the footage I've been showing throughout this video, the footage looks great. The camera's super easy to use. I think it looks great as well. And although for the fact it's been out for over a year, DJI's promoting all these sales, I think with all these sales coming up, at the time of recording this video, this is the most up-to-date Osmo Action product you can get. I think they have an Osmo Action 2 probably coming out. You usually don't have crazy sales like this and promote it so much online if you're not trying to clear out the current ones to bring in a new one. I'll tell you right now, Osmo Action 2 comes out, I'm gonna buy it day one. There's no question about it. It is the action camera for me. The Insta 360 one does great 4K and 360 footage. This is just great and dynamic for straight up 4K action camera footage. There's pros and cons There's of using both. Right now the Osmo Action is probably my favorite action camera and been doing a lot of great stuff for me lately and until I get bored of it, I'm gonna keep using it. The Osmo Action is it worth the money. Should you spend the money that it's gonna cost to get you one? They used to be $500, they're now being shipped down to I think 350 Canadian. I enjoyed the Osmo Action so much that when I saw the sales going on, they were selling the Osmo Action for $350 Canadian, a smoking deal, plus they gave you two batteries, dual charger, all that stuff, I bought a second one the other day. That is how good this camera is. If you like more videos like this, don't do tech reviews super often, but tech's a huge part of how I make these videos. So if you like videos like this, or you wanna see some cool hockey highlights, and some pro hockey, college hockey, all that kind of stuff coming up, subscribe to the channel, leave a like, and uh, see you in the next video. Big review, Kenny.